Okay, so make sure you download Putty Gen in addition to regular old Putty. And then once you have Putty Gen, you can open it. And it'll look like this. And I'll go really quickly here, but you go to the conversions <laughs> menu and you click import key. Because the format that Amazon gives you the private key in is not buddy friendly. So you'll find your key in there, the pen file you download, you'll open it. It'll give you this uh, screen with some information. Presumably that's the actual private key. Uh, then you type in whatever comment you have. So you can you know, not get confused about the keys later. And then click Save Private Key. And that'll generate a .ppk file, um, which you can use with Putty. I can show you how to do that. Can you do this two, two more times? Sure, sure. All right, so once you've downloaded Putty Gen, open it, and it'll look like this. Hands up if everyone has the screen open. Anyone has the screen open? One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Uh, then go to the conversions menu. Click on import key. And then in the dialog that pops up, find the .pem file that you downloaded from, uh, from Amazon just a few minutes ago. Open it. And then, you know, nothing spectacular will happen, but you need to, uh, this will, basically give you the option to give it a comment and attach a password to the, uh, the key file if you want to. I didn't because this is just you know academic. But if, once you have this open, uh, click Save Private Key. It'll warn you. Just click Yes. And it'll generate a .ppk file, which I guess it stands for Putty Private Key. It's a format that Putty knows how to read. Yeah, I mean, whatever you want. Call it my private key or something. NYC open data private key or something. All right, so that's step one. Okay, shall we give Windows user two minutes? So we do a quick raffle? First round raffle? Sure. Jay, you won the, you, you are the winner of last winner. You can join her. So, let me show you the stickers. Different color, pink, blue, green, and you can say, I mind data. Please, Windows user, we're waiting for you, please. 45. 45. Oh, sweet one, Garrison. Go on, away. That's really nice. Three, 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 He's getting stuck. Sticker shot. You good? Yes. Um, maybe do a few more. Because <laughs> Windows user takes. How are Windows user doing? Is everyone yes. uh, good? Good. 39. 39. All right. Oh, yeah. Does anyone need anything for me? Oh, they are? Who would hurt me? Hurry up with the minutes. You charge by the minute here. Two more? Two more expensive notes. You just have to win. We have uh, 15 and 13. 15, sir. Sir, sir, Yeah. Uh, 
Are we all good? Are we all good? We both. Okay, guys, back to work. So, you want to assemble this based on your new public DNS? Oh, sorry. One more step. Guys, would you mind keep your voice lower so we can hear? Once you've created that PPK file, uh, open up PuTTY, it should look something like this. All right, so you're going to want to paste the IP or the DNS name from the instance that you created over in EC2. So if you look in your management uh, console, click on instances on the left. You see all these guys running. And there's a column named public IP or public DNS. Uh, I think it's easier to copy the IP. So just copy it. Uh, paste it in this hostname field. And then on the left hand side, there is a uh, menu titled SSH. Expand that, click on off. And then there is a browse button. If you want to click that, and then click on the PPK file. And this just tells Putty to use this private key file for this connection. Okay, yeah, so once you go to SSH, click on talk, A-U-T-H. Browse and select your private key. And then go back to the session um, thing up here, session menu. And I would save it, just so that you don't have to do this every time. And just give it whatever name you want, like NYC, Open Data, Hadoop. And it's saved, and now you can, it'll automatically connect with the private key every time. Thank you. And I think we're, I think we're at the same point now. Okay, awesome. I, I will add this part to the repo, so Windows user can also do that. Okay. So... Have you all tried to access your node? Can you do that now? Yes, all three of them. All three of them, good. So that's how to do that. You first copy the command and switch it back to the server you have. Guys, guys, no chit chat, please. We have too many people here. If you are on Mac, you can do Command N to open a new Windows. Just open three of them. This will be my third one. What? Sorry, I can't hear you. Are you on Windows or? Cool. Guys, if you get this work, please help your own neighbors. So slow. So we have 
Yes. So, um, since you have the machine, next would be like get the Hadoop source code, get Java source code, and make sure they can talk to each other. And uh, the last step would be like telling master node what you should do, and master send a command to slaves, and assemble the result back from slave. Connection is so slow. Um, you is your yours working? Yes. Can I switch to yours? Sure. Mine's not working now. Okay. Did you get the request? Uh, no. Okay, so. Um, oh, do I need to be on your on that screen? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's your time to shine. <laughs> I have to download it to start presenting. So, since we're, it's two, two part of the workshop, um, if you're not coming, I just want to walk you through, you can work out this on your own. So, once you access this node, each of the node, it will ask you whether you want to continue connecting, do yes, and it would, next is generate your server key. You run this command in your command window, and do enter three times. It's like the same thing um, Lenin did in his putty. So it's saying, I don't want any key, key phrase. And you save this into your .ssh folder. And you want to open those id underscore rsa published key. And each of the server should have individual id underscore rsa. You copy paste all of them and save to your sublime like this. This one is what I grabbed from my server. So it's actually three lines of, of the ISA. This is the first machine, second machine, third machine. Save all of the ISA in the same file. So, so after you finish the whole section here, you should have this file. You grab our SSH RSA from each individual instance. And the next one is saying you can add this key. Yeah, sure. So basically it's saying each three nodes have their authentication. I want to make sure they can authorize each other. So I'm adding, copy pasting their RSA to each of the individual RSA file. So you copy paste the whole file and go back into the file called authorized keys. Authorized keys already have one key there. So you want to copy paste the three key you just made in the end of the file. You should have three keys in the authorized key file. Uh, you need to go to each individual instance from this one, SSH key generator. It will, it will generate a file called ID underscore RSA underneath of the SSH folder. It's required. <laughs> yes. But security is very, really important. But you don't want to be hacked anywhere. You never know. Maybe you want the node have your credit card information. It's required.
its requirement for a Hadoop cluster. And yes, do the same thing for each of the instance. Just with different key names? Yes. So, next two things I want to mention quickly. Um, Thursday. Guys, guys. So, I have their big title like saying which which file you're dealing with. You, de you deal with um, server key file, authorized key file, and host file. In host file, you want to put something like this. The first um, number is your private D DNS. And this is the name you just put there. I put M1, M2, M3. So split them into three lines and save it in your host file. After you finish all of the steps, you can ping each other. Like if I'm on M1, I should do ping M2 and ping M3. It will tell me whether my security group are set correctly, my RSA is set correctly, and my host set correctly. Because if you don't know what's the private DNS, you can ping that. If you are not in the same firewall, you can ping each other. So this is a quick way you can make sure they can talk to each other. After that, you, do, you install your Java by those four commands. And it could, you need to remember to exit and re-enter. Otherwise, your Java uh, home setting won't be validated. So make sure you exit and log it back again. And check whether the Java home be the same value I put here. We're going to walk through all this on Thursday, right? Yes, oh. but in case some of you are not coming back, in case of you think I did a terrible job. Yeah. And, and the third part is you, how you can install the Hadoop and inst configure it. Um, I noticed different mirror where it cause you problem. So I specify I want the mirror from Columbia. I tried two more. I tried three mirror. Only this one works. The works. The other two break the Hadoop. I don't know why. So How you. Can I see the, the, the um, the link was posted to the meetup. Okay. You sh you should get email already. Yeah, there. So first, download the source code for Hadoop. Unzip it. Go inside of the folder. You can configure the environment by using. VI Hadoop environment file. Adding the Java home path to the file. Configure the core site file and the this is how you should configure it. Um, next, you make the template folder so you can save the log. Otherwise, every time when you restart the server, the log is gone. You want to make new folder to save it. And this is the part I mentioned how you should configure your redundancy. Um, usually the value should set to be one or two or at least less than your slaves. So you are not making too much copies of your own self. And you in in master file and the local file, you mention what is your local server now? So if you are on master, you put M1. If you are on slave, you put M2 or M3. After you done everything here, you don't need to do it again. Just copy over from your master to two slaves by using security copy, SCP. And you can format the pass and start your own Hadoop by running this command. Mm -hmm. This is saying, I want to go to this specific folder to do start all. And you can check whether all the Hadoop is running correctly by typing JPS. If JPS is working correctly, on the master node, you should see four procedure, name node, job tracker, second name node, GP, JPS, on the slave node, you should say, you should see task tracker, date node, JPS. That's how you check check them. 
Sometimes your slave only give you um, task tracker and the JPS, and the data node is not boost up. You need to reconfigure the steps. It means you're missing one of the steps at least. And you can do stop all by running this command on your master. It will shut all of them. And you will have your first cluster. And after that, we can do some map reduce. Sounds good? I hope to see you Thursday. We have to shut down the machine. Yes, please. Before you go, shut down your machine. Stop. Don't terminate. If you terminate, you'll lose it. <laughs> so do select all action. Stop. I just see. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. By the way, you notice there is selection. I choose Virginia. It's the closest location to us. I also tried Oregon. I feel like Virginia is faster. Good. Thank you.